you want. Uh, no, it's okay. What? <laughs> it's up to you, dog. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Hold on a second. Let me readjust my volume here. Just all right. Hello, 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 hello. Hey, everybody! Welcome to episode number six. All right. Hey, that sounded good, Justin. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> all right. And we have uh, one email submission, right? Yes. Yep. yep. Okay. This episode, we're talking about voodoo, though. We have yes, to we are. say that. Yes. Okay. Should I start? Sure. Go ahead. All right. Hey, everybody, and thanks again for joining joining us for... Let me restart. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Got to get the dick out of my mouth. One second. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thanks again for joining us for another episode of the Don't Follow Me Home podcast. This is episode number six, titled Voodoo. We're talking about voodoo today. Uh, very creepy topic for uh, a lot of us. For me, uh, we'll get into my opinion on it later. I think it's more of a BS, but, you know, who am I to say? <laughs> uh, not only that, but we have an email submission that we're going to read and go over. Um, yeah, we're going to dive into that, and that's going to be a whole lot of fun. A uh, brand new submission from one of our listeners. So looking yeah. forward to that. Yeah. So who wants to start? Awesome. Um, okay, I'll start. Um, <laughs> so, okay, Corey, right away, like, I'm so intrigued. What, when you think voodoo and you're like, I think it's a load of BS, like, where does your, before you go into, like, explanation, yeah. where does your brain go when you think of voodoo? My brain immediately goes to dolls. Yeah. <laughs> like a doll totally and you stick pins in it, like a pin doll. Shrunken heads. Shrunken, shrunken heads. Shrunken shrunken heads. heads. Oh. Yeah, but see, shrunken heads is something a little different in my opinion, but, you know, maybe not. Um, yeah, I, I immediately go to dolls. And the first thing I think of, honestly, is like a placebo effect, like, you know, what they okay. do with medicine. I just think, like, if people didn't know or didn't believe in voodoo and somebody were to, like, make a doll of them or do the ritual and start – uh, poking pins and needles into it, yep. would they even know what's happening or not? Mm -hmm. You know, it, I just, I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Um, which I think is totally fair because honestly, before I spiraled into all of like, I, my brain couldn't even comprehend half of what I was researching at one point. Cause I just looked up stuff for way too long. But, <laughs> um, I also thought of like voodoo dolls right away. Like I feel like, unless you grew up in like a voodoo culture or, or anything like that. Absolutely. That's where our brains are going to go because that's kind of what the media and stuff portrays are the creepy voodoo dolls for placing curses and like causing harm and stuff. Right. Right. Um, so I found a lot of really cool information though. Um, and it's so much more than the dolls and, I'll talk about the dolls a little bit later because they're actually the complete opposite of what we think that they are, <laughs> um, which totally blew my mind away. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I, I definitely thought so because I wasn't I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, so first of all, and like I guess I kind of knew this, but I never put it fully together. Voodoo is actually a religion that originates in Africa. And came over to the Americas when we started bringing slave ships over. Um, and it's a combination of African, Catholic, and Native American traditions that's practiced all around the world. So obviously still in Africa, but like Haiti, the Caribbean, and then in the here in the Americas, um, which I'm sure, I don't like assuming, but like my mind always goes to New Orleans, right? When we think of voodoo. At least right. me. Um, yeah, That's so, actually where I thought it all started was New Orleans, but I guess you mm -hmm. said Africa? Yeah, it originates hmm. in Africa, and it's still very widely practiced there. Um, and hmm. the only reason it ever started over here is because, like I said, the, the slave ships that, that we brought over. So they brought their religion with them. Um, but kind of like hmm. when we talked about in the witchcraft episode, right, because it it was different. That's where it starts to spiral and is seen as creepy, um, witchcraft, harmful type of thing, type of practice. Um, Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the one thing, so the big thing that 
is super different about the voodoo religion. And I'm just going to pause really quick. So the humidity has my asthma acting up a little bit. So sorry if I'm like, I sound gaspy today. <laughs> um, Jeez. Um, yeah. I so, noticed. okay. I, I noticed in myself. So I wanted to take a minute there. <laughs> um, so voodoo does believe in like a God, right? Like kind of essentially just like all religions, right? They have that higher power. Um, but the, Big difference is that voodoo voodoo followers believe that they have to rely on hundreds to thousands of other spirits to communicate with this god. And these spirits are known as, I'm probably going to butcher it, but Lao. So these spirits are known as Lao. And the Lao receive their power from God to communicate on behalf of the followers and the communication takes place during ceremonies or observances um, or rituals right um, <clears throat> and there's all these different Lao that are for different things like protection blessings good fortune to help with relationships um, different things that you would go through in all your lives there's a different Lao that oh my gosh brain my brain just like stopped processing there there's a different Lao that is for each of those things um and what happens during these ceremonies is that there are high priests or high priestesses that allow the that allow the Lao <laughs> to possess them for a moment and that is how <laughs> that is how the communication takes place right so in that moment of possession of the medium the priest the priestess um, the, the Lao are communicating to all of the other followers, whatever the guidance or suggestion or advice, um, from their God is, is to tell them. Okay. Hmm. okay. I mean, to me, my mind right away went to like gins and genies and like Ooh. that sort of thing with all these different, like mystical formations. And, you know, I know it's completely different than that, but it almost just kind of sound, you know, sounds like a cat. <laughs> he's a black cat. He always wants to, he always wants to make an appearance yes <laughs> enter falcor uh, he's um, not gonna want to be around when we talk about some of the ceremonial things who yeah. <laughs> yeah that's where my mind went right away though yeah but, uh, interesting yeah um no that gin or genie thing that's that's a really i like that kind of tying those two together because i think that's also another area or pathway that some people might go when they think about voodoo, right? Is mm -hmm. like jinn aren't necessarily considered good genies, right? In different religions. Right. Um, so like witchcraft type of evil, evil witchcraft, evil magic. Yep. Mm -hmm. Justin, Megan, what do you guys think about all this? What, what um, side are you on? I'm kind of on your side, if mm -hmm. um, just because, well, I mean, like, I don't know, man. I mean, <sighs> sometimes my brain works faster than my mouth. It's okay. <laughs> I get that. <laughs> or vice versa or whatever. Don't worry. I'll just edit this out and it looks like nothing happened. <laughs> um, no, um, I totally agree with the whole placebo effect because like i mean it seems like it only affects people and i'm going back to the voodoo dolls obviously mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's like it's it usually seems like well somebody knows that they're becoming a voodoo doll so that's why it hurts them right or something like that. I don't know. Or like association, like things are people like to associate different events, um, happenings or, you know, happenings to them as being, um, a part of something else, like something had caused it, you know, mm -hmm. humans always try to associate things with, with other things. And I think that has some, something to do with it too. Like if you knew somebody made a doll of yourself and you knew they were, um, potentially going to start messing with it and something bad happens in your life, you just attribute it to, Oh, they must have been, you know, messing with me. Um, that's kind of how I see it, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Is there any well, proof or, like, evidence or anything that this is, like, legit? 
Uh, like the religion itself or the voodoo dolls? Well, I guess, yeah, the voodoo dolls. I'm still caught up so, on that. No, you're totally fine. So I'm <laughs> going to go down and talk a little bit about the voodoo dolls for a second then. Um, because like I said, they're actually the complete opposite of what I thought they were and what you guys are kind of, it sounds like, thinking they are. So that whole perception of poking the pins into dolls and like having someone's hair or like teeth or like a picture of them and like setting it on fire and then they burn to death or whatever, right? Um, that is not a true reflection of what voodoo actually is and what voodoo dolls so are used for. Yeah. Um, so there's always a gray area, right? Kind of like I talked about with the witchcraft episode. Yes, not everyone who practices voodoo is using these dolls for what they're meant. Absolutely. Some people believe in curses and hexes, and um, I'll talk about that in a little bit. And yes, there's a way to curse people, and using a doll is absolutely a way that they believe. However, the rituals with the dolls are actually more meant to heal and help their their people and their followers out. Um, so, for example, when dolls and, and they're not, I have some pictures that I'll send you guys here. Um, when they're used. They're not like the cliche voodoo dolls, like you said, Justin Hollywood um, kind of put in our brains. Some of them are made of stone. And Justin, I'm going to send you a couple, or I guess I only have one picture, one actual good picture. Um, I'm going to send you it. Some of them are made of stone. And yes, some of them are made of cloth, but they're all meant for like healing purposes or helping purposes. So when, like, the cloth dolls are hung from trees, um, and I have a cloth doll picture too, I'll send you, Justin. Um, those are usually hung in, like, trees and cemeteries and intended to open and maintain lines of communication between people that have recently passed away. Um, when they're tacked to trees upside down, they're intended to make the creator stop caring for someone who is bad for them. So like a bad relationship, a toxic friendship. Um, and then they have, you know, the stone dolls who sometimes they'll, they're called Pwen. <laughs> so I'm probably butchering that too, but, um, and those are used in rituals to communicate or invoke deities and they'll fill the Pwen with different items that appeal to a particular Lao, right? So like there's some shells and, and little feathers on the, the dolls I sent you a picture of, the, the stone ones. Oh, yeah. um, so they'll put things on or in these Pwen dolls that are supposed to help bring that specific Lao to them to help them through a time that they need extra help with, that sort of thing. Um, does that offer any insight to you guys yeah i mean that makes more sense to me mm -hmm. um you know i still think it's a placebo but some people sure. need that to get through <laughs> things in their life yep. you know <laughs> <laughs> you know depending on what you believe in or what religion or you are or yep. whatever it's you know people do different things to make themselves feel better in different ways and different things work better for other people and mm -hmm. you know, so that you know I could see that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you sent me the pictures, the stone people, mm -hmm. they're actually like carved out. And stuff. Yeah. I, I was just picturing a rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't describe it very well. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> just a rock. Like it's a, a potato really cool rock. It's a rock, Amber. <laughs> yeah. yeah. A pet rock. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> a little happy face you. painted on. <laughs> Yeah. So like I said, they're actually, their intended, intended use is the complete opposite of what most of us essentially think of. Right. And I guess I didn't realize that voodoo, I, I don't know, maybe I'm dumb, but I didn't realize that that's an actual religion. Mm -hmm. No, I, I, I don't. Yeah, you are that. dumb. <laughs> Justin was going to say. You are dumb, <laughs> but I'm dumb too because I didn't realize that either. We're dumb together. All right. <laughs> I didn't know that. No, yeah, neither know. did I. I thought... Just like I think you guys were saying, you think voodoo dolls, shrunken heads, crazy ceremonies where they're calling up like dark magic and conjuring mm -hmm. dark magic. 
but most of it is intended for guidance, for help, healing purposes. So Megan, kind of like with the witchcraft episode, what we were talking about, right? If we go way back when witchcraft, I mean, quote unquote, started or first started being recorded, most of it was for just practical healing, natural healing. Um, And from what I've read, a lot of that is what voodoo looks at too. They just, their God and God beliefs are shaped differently and how they communicate with their God um, is different than what a lot of us are used to. When did, when did voodoo like originate? What kind of time period? Uh, It's been around for a really long time. Like, Okay. I couldn't oh. find a I couldn't find a start I couldn't find a start date. I'll just leave it at that. Like well, it had been being practiced for hundreds of years in Africa before it even came to to America on the slave ships. Yeah. Well I mean, believe it or not, just saying that it originated a long time ago still helps out my comment that, I, oh, that I'm about to say here is good. It, it it almost seems like okay, so it originated in Africa, right? So It seems like this is their form of almost um, the Native Americans over in America with the medicine healers and and uh, that sort of um, they use more of nature. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know if voodoo is similar to that or not, but it just almost kind of seems like a similar thing where Mm -hmm. you use different elements from the earth to portray different things for Mm -hmm. different people and uh, mixing it all together. And I'm. I'm starting to get kind of different concoctions to my mind now. So I, I just yeah. thought of med- medicine healers and yep. stuff like that. Well, even um, for like, cause you know, you picture of like voodoo rituals and stuff like that. It could be equivalent to like a native American powwow. Oh right. yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's what I think of too. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. No, you guys are, I'm glad that it's all making sense because you're right in line with it, honestly. Um, Kind of like I said when right at the beginning, it a lot of people view it as a mixture of um, Catholic practices, um, African and the Native American traditions. And so they do have like when they do these rituals to call in the Lao um, or to show like respect, there is animal sacrifices, which... Not fun topic to talk about for me and Megan, <laughs> um, but that's to show like respect for one of their gods. Um, they use fetishes, which are essentially just objects All meant to right. contain. <laughs> Not what we were okay, thinking. Let's talk about- okay. <laughs> Justin immediately loses interest. Um, <laughs> they're basically objects to contain a power of a, of a particular spirit, and they do have ceremony da- ceremonial dances which have like elaborate costumes, masks, music, instruments, drums are big with, with um, these dances. So very much like you said, Justin, kind of thinking about like a native American powwow or their ceremonial dances. Um, hmm. And these hey, Justin, a lot. Right oh. Good job. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, uh, well, when I, when, it when only I'm, took till episode six. <laughs> Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Whenever I hear about a voodoo ritual, I always think about Scooby Doo. <laughs> what the cartoon? I know or the, the movie. <laughs> no, the live action movie. <sighs> oh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Island. yeah. on the island. It's yeah, big in that movie, man. Uh, it is. No, it, it really carry on. No, you're fine. I'm looking up, sending you pictures of a couple of pictures that I got of some of this two ceremonial things so they do have like these ceremonial baths that they do and they use a lot of herbs lots of color food plants um, again all to pay tribute to specific lao Um, and they use uh, like drawing symbols um, to call on these lao as well and again you know like the dolls are involved and they use divination so (laughs) Justin's favorite thing, right? So yes, things like certain different types of tarot readings, reading the cards, using candle water readings, um, spiritual baths, those take specific clients and bathe them with a particular goal, right? So washing away and removing negativity, bring good luck, opening up doors of opportunity, 
there's a lot of different, um, I came up, like, there's so, and half of these words I can't even say either, so I <laughs> am not going to dive too much okay. more into some of those because it would just They'll sound just like jibber-jabber. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but lots of different types of ceremonies that are supposed to be, again, all with good intent to help guide you down the right path, um, pay tribute and respect to the Lao and the gods, um, and wash away negativity in your life. So, hmm. Yeah, definitely seems like an older style practice to me. Oh, yeah. Uh, I just, yeah, I don't believe in that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody um, cares about your opinion, Corey. That's true. Gosh, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> Me either, though. It's okay. So, <laughs> oh, man. Uh, um, I do have, though, because like I said, there's always that gray area, and some people do practice curses. Um, I do have a little, you know, play-by-play -play of how you can inflict a curse on someone, if you guys would like to hear that. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. If any of our listeners try this, please, you know, we're advising not to. So do it on your own accord. <laughs> yeah, we don't condone. I don't want to be held responsible. So uh, <laughs> yeah. please don't try this at home. All right. So essentially, right, curses are magic spells that are placed upon people with the intent of harming someone. And this could be, you know, any everyone's intent is going to be different, right? So... First, what you want to do is you want to collect a glass jar, so a poppet, right? That's what they call their, like the containers, they call them poppets. And it can be anything that symbolizes your, your target, your person. So a picture of them, some of their hair, um, a piece of paper with their name on it, um, that sort of thing. So questions so far, we want a glass jar, something to keep keep it in. Um, and some sort of personal artifact. All I know is I'm really glad that I just put CP on this uh, podcast <laughs> and not my full name. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, <yes>. Justin. <laughs> no. Well, okay, here though, right? If you use a photograph, uh, you want to write their full name legibly in red or black ink. So okay. at least our full names aren't out there, right? I have one good right. skill, and that's penmanship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be very good at these curses, then. <laughs> yes, I would. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> oh, and then you you want to get some sort of medium. And any of the following of these items will serve as a strong medium. So a rusty nail, thumbtack, or other sharp <laughs> object. What? <laughs> can be not added to the nail. Jar. Yeah, not just a nail, but a good Candy rusty one. Um, you want to send off that tetanus, right? Um, yeah. A melted candy cane, <laughs> lollipop. <laughs> no, you want to hurt the target. So Moldy these. <laughs> ew. <laughs> Some of that uh, that mold or fungus or whatever from Salem. Um, Infect them. <laughs> yes. Yes, because this these are added to the jar to gen generally hurt our targets. Then we want to try some sort of red pepper flake or whole red pepper that will cause the target to become angry. Vinegar may be used to sour the life of an individual or to sour the relationship between two people. Rose thorns may be used to cause your target harm through deception as a beautiful rose looks deceptively soft until it pricks your finger right? Hmm. Or to sour love. Then we want to add a match. You know, it's, it seems like this could be potentially optional because it says a match can be added to jars containing paper to fire up your curse whenever you shake it or move the jar. So really, you know, fire it up from time to time. Um, and then poisonous plants may be added to the jar to cause harm to the target. But we want to be sure to wear protective gear whenever you're handling anything poisonous because you don't want to, you know, harm yourself while you're planning on harming someone else. That makes sense. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> this is, uh, I don't know it's about you guys. <laughs> this one's my favorite. Urine, your own, may be added to the jar to help you gain dominance over your target. <laughs> <laughs> However, you want to avoid using urine or blood that are not your own as these are biohazards and could cause you to become ill. So, hmm. Look out for your yourself while you're doing this, guys. 
Um, Mm -hmm. Graveyard soil can be used to drive someone away or to drive two people apart. Soil from a fresh grave is the most potent, but taking it may be considered a defilement by authorities. Hmm. But Mm -hmm. then we want to clean the jar off and remind yourself of your intention. Place that poppet in the jar, add the medium to the jar on top of the poppet, seal that jar tightly um, with red or black wax. Shake the jar while saying an incantation that you, you created or thinking your intention and hide the jar in a dark place. Crazy. So there you go. There, there are your steps to place a, a curse that seems like a lot on of someone. Work. There's no. It does. Involved. It really does. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Where are the needles? Yes. The needles. I think they make it so well, difficult. So uh, mm-hmm. if because if you really really hate somebody like that, then you won't mm-hmm. w- be willing to. But it right. kind of makes you think twice about if you actually hate them or not. You're like, <laughs> ah, that's a lot of yeah, stuff. Yeah, halfway through. Great. Yeah. <laughs> nah. While you're waiting to piss got, in the jar, it's like, ah, yeah. Do I really hate this guy <laughs> this much? I know. I can I just know. use a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yes. So what do we think? Is it is it going to work if we try it, or is all is it all hooey? I think we should try it. For sure. Uh, and who? <laughs> yeah, you, you can try that, Justin. Ooh. I'll just oh, I'll record it. No, it's all right. It's it's you guys can try it on me. <laughs> oh my god. Well, that's the thing. I mean, what if it works though? <laughs> right. You you you, <laughs> you you don't believe in this stuff. That's true. I'll try it. Okay, Corey, you can try it on me, and I'll try one on you. We'll just do it like at the same time. And don't so tell me when. It... Okay. If... okay. Wait, I just said the opposite of what you said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> try it at the same time. No, don't tell me when. So then, if they both work, we're both screwed. But if they if it doesn't work, then we we can high five. Well, I mean, is there a way to like kind of uh, hone in on? Just giving us like athlete's foot versus a car accident or something like right. that. Right. Well, it, like it says, right? Think about your intention. So I don't know. It, maybe you, maybe you write athlete's foot on a piece of paper and pin it to a right or left foot of like a little doll in the jar or something. And rusty nail. Right. Rusty See if nail, Justin you know. gets athlete's foot. Yeah, I don't uh, like that. I've had that before. <laughs> yeah. It's something he hasn't had. <laughs> we need your medical records, Justin, to figure it all out. Okay. <laughs> but what would the medium be? I don't need to really show dominance. And if I add water, I don't want him to drown. So oh, that's it's like, fair hmm. point. Yeah. Vinegar, make his life sour. Yeah, there you that's go. True. No, my that's life's true. already sour. You're too happy all the time. Got to add some vinegar to that. Right, sour sunflower in there. Do you people know me? <laughs> uh, yeah, I do. Uh, I th- no, I, I'm actually okay. If this is true, I'm actually convinced somebody started one of these things for me like 20 years ago. So I have a rain cloud over my head following me everywhere. Do you really? Oh, yeah. Oh, Justin. That's you, just, okay. you just have bad luck. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I'm just. I'm you need us to do. You need us to try one of the, you know, positive voodoo dolls on you. That's what you need. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Let's try that. Okay. And then when um, you win the lottery, yeah. you got to give me a cut. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll give you the doll. <laughs> you know, I think I think luck is a different topic though, because I'm a very unlucky person too. But it doesn't mean you can't be a happy person. We make a great team. I am. <laughs> No, I, come on. No, like, this is, I'll step on the one little pebble in the street, roll my ankle, and that's just what happens to me. So are you wearing... through the woods, you find all the roots to trip over, and the stumps, (laughs) everything, constantly (laughs) tripping. You know, yeah. What would take care of that is just not walking through the woods. <laughs> <laughs> but he does it every time we go there every day with Jake, and he still hits all of them. Oh, yeah. boy. That's, oh, that's just, yeah, I guess it's my, I should learn from my mistakes. Maybe you're daydreaming too much. 
Maybe. That could be. Maybe you're aloof. That's the word of the day. Aloof. 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 <clears throat> That's a good word. Not breezy. Just aloof. Yeah, Not just... breezy today. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, no. Do you have any uh, like examples of positive voodoo? Uh, that things? I didn't look up. Well, actually, hold on. No, I don't know. Look at the negatives. I, you know, that's what people are into. All the negatives. Um, yeah, not not so much like the positive stuff, except for what I already kind of talked about, right? That most of these dolls are created to help connection, like the ones that are placed in cemeteries, to keep that communication open between them and their loved ones who have passed, Um, or hanging dolls upside down on trees to help stop. Um, the relationship between the pers- the creator, essentially, and someone who's bad for them. So kind of turning your luck that way, right? Hmm. Yeah. If, that, if, that, <clears throat> if that's like a process, though, I don't want to try. Because <laughs> I want something like, I want to see results. You, within like you want instant gratification. Yeah, sure. Um, well, sometimes negative things that happen in your life are just lessons, you know, they're not really negative. They're, they're there for a reason, you know, you just, that's, you got to take it for what it is. Mm-hmm. That's true. But, you know, most people learn the lessons. <laughs> and you don't. No. <laughs> no. Oh, so <laughs> I am curious because, you know, we talk about all of this stuff and how, you know, it's kind of like a placebo effect, Corey keeps saying. Um, yes. I, I have a story about a curse, the curse of Julia Brown, who vood- was a voodoo priestess in Louisiana, um, and something that happened to the whole town when she died. So I'm curious how long to hear. Ago? Oh, what, what? How long ago was 1915 that? 1915 was when. All right. She- <laughs> <laughs> Long time, long time. Um, <laughs> yes, and she said to Three haunt this book. Po- oh, you, do you just live your timeline Ooh. based off Titanic, Justin? Of course I do. Yeah, <laughs> makes sense. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of curious to hear what you guys think of this. So Julia Brown was she was called the Voodoo Priestess um, uh, in a small town called Frenier, Louisiana, and she was a very well respected magic practitioner practitioner there um so she would travel the village performing rituals to help with things like childbirth fight off infections cure illnesses um and most of these people would recover quickly so whatever she was using it seemed to work right kind of like we talked about a lot of healing purposes between the voodoo she was she was using however even though the town's people respected her they started to take her for granted So she started feeling very used. Um, Many of them just began demanding help without asking. And she started to develop a bit of a mean streak, we'll say, and just began scaring all of these locals by predicting when terrible things were about to happen to them. So regardless of if she was foretelling the future events or placing a curse, these things seemed to fall in line. So she always seemed to know when something bad was going to happen to this town. Um, But on September 28, 1915, she made her final terrifying prediction and then just dropped dead. In the weeks leading up to her death, she was often heard singing, one day I'm going to die and I'm going to take all of you with me over and over again. The entire town gathered at Julia's funeral, hoping that the show of attention would help her soul rest easy. However, unfortunately for them, it appeared to have the opposite effect. Julia Brown was true to her word. As the nails were hammered into her coffin, a sudden and unusually devastating hurricane ripped through the entire village, leaving only two citizens left alive. Hundreds of people died during the storm. In fact, so many were lost that the locals claim it's still common for skeletons to surface today, only to drift down the muggy swamp. The force of the hurricane was felt all over southern Louisiana and claimed over 350 lives. Over the years, countless developers have tried to rebuild the area, but the only thing that remains on the island 
where Julia Brown's village once stood is a mass grave where the dead were buried. What do you think? Creepy. Mm-hmm. Well, you just don't use those people. <laughs> right? Moral of the story. <laughs> you know, or or it could have just been a natural disaster coincidence. I mean, I get it. In 1915, we didn't have, I mean, it's not like meteorologists predict the weather very well today. So <laughs> back then, how right? how did she know? Exactly. In the weeks leading up and like her final prediction, right? And then she just drops dead. And as they're hammering the nails in her coffin, that's when the hurricane hits. Ironic. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, no, that's a fascinating story, though, regardless if it's a coincidence or not. A nice spooky story. Yes. Fire. And I have, I'll post all the pictures I'm sending Justin. I'll obviously post online like I always do, but I've got some pictures of the swamp. So it's Manchac Swamp um, and the graveyard that's still there and where she was said to um, stay this tiny little, teeny tiny little cottage thing. Um, Mm -hmm. so that's all still, still there. And the swamp is just really creepy. And of course, right. There's tons of accounts of paranormal activity on this tiny little Island where hundreds of people have experienced. The main thing is a woman's ghostly voice singing her song. One day I'm going to die and I'm going to take you all with me and like humming and, and that sort of thing. Mm. That's pretty. Yeah, that's pretty creepy. Sorry, I've been watching. Oh, you're look fine. At your pictures. Yeah. So I can't. I can't multitask. No, you're fine. Um, visitors and locals of the surrounding. I guess I'll just call it, kind of call it like a ghost village, right? Because they can't. They haven't been able to rebuild because it just continues to not work. Um, they hear that. They say that they hear like moans and screams from unknown, an unknown woman's voice. Um, that cries from the victims of the old hurricane can still be faintly heard in the distance, but no one can ever be found when they look for where these screams are coming from. <sighs> Spooky. Then let's go down there. <laughs> right? Let's do it. No, thanks. I want to go to New Orleans and, like, Louisiana just in general, so. Sure. Yeah. Let's do it. I'm down. Of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> hey, Corey, What's what up? did we just talk about? Uh, <clears throat> that was really creepy. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what to believe or what and what not to believe. <laughs> <laughs> don't put me on the spot man <laughs> i'm just kidding I'm just did you kidding. not tell everybody else that i had to leave for a sec no no i just thought you were being really quiet <laughs> oh yeah, it's just taking it all in yeah yeah no, i had to leave for a quick sec i'm back i'm back <laughs> okay so um do we have that uh that email submission we sure do uh-huh. all right so Oh, come on, internet. Uh, Sorry, I'm pulling it up on my phone. Okay, so this is from a woman named Nina who wrote in a few weeks ago to our page. And it's kind of long, so just sit back, get comfy, and listen. All right, right. so she says, It was the summer of 96, or better referred to as the summer of hell. I can't help but to blame myself. After all, I've watched plenty of horror movies to know all the basic rules, but even then I ignored the most important one. I was young and curious, so attracted to anything horror, I played with a spirit board by myself, and if that wasn't enough, I had chanted spells that I found in a spell book written in another language. Sorry, my neighbor is mowing his lawn, so I have my window (laughs) open. Of course. Um, Right. Frustrated at what I thought was a complete fail since nothing had happened, I continued on with this dangerous combo. 
A few days had passed and things began to change. I started hearing strange sounds. For each night that went by, the evil entity became more aggressive. Come, some call it sleep paralysis, but I know it was an evil force holding me captive. I, could hear, I can hear the growling in my ear and the voices as it whispers to me, calling out my name. I was terrified. I fought so hard to have just enough courage to open my eyes and then fear would strike again when I would witness with my own eyes a hooded shadow figure by my bed and shadow figures darting in and out of the wall while calling my name. It was getting worse. I can now feel it touching me. It actually touched my foot. It wouldn't let me sleep and it was as if it was getting stronger. I was so scared and knowing it was my fault, I didn't want to tell anyone, especially my father. All my family had warned me about tampering with spirit boards. I no longer felt safe in my own home, and every chance I got, I tried to go somewhere, hoping that this thing wouldn't follow me. I distinctly remember several occasions where the evil had followed me. My aunt had asked me to stay with her and her family during the week to babysit my little cousin while she worked. I had fallen asleep. Something had disturbed my sleep. I opened my eyes to the light above me flickering on and off. I immediately left the bedroom and fell asleep on the couch for the rest of the night. Another night, I had experienced the same exact thing, but this time, as I left the room, I heard whispering from my cousin's bedroom, which was located right next to the living room. Confused and terrified, I started to wonder if it was my cousin that I had been babysitting, only to find out later that he was sleeping with his parents in his parents' room the entire night. I knew I had to dispose of the board, and when I did, I heard a voice later that night say, I will come back. Eventually, we moved, and I began feeling safe again. The activity still happens from time to time. I realized later that this thing wasn't a part of the house. I summoned it, and it is attached to me. I thought I was losing my mind until one day my older cousin had visited. She also is a believer who has had her own personal experiences. We were exchanging stories of strange events, and she distinctly heard heavy breathing coming from upstairs. We both looked at each other, and she noticed my dog turned toward the direction of the stairs, and she heard it too. She had lived there prior to me and stated that she's never heard that during the time of residency there. And that's that's where she stops. Oh, boy. Hmm. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of, so I kind of, I kind of, I kind of missed some of it though. Like, cause she started off saying that she said it wasn't sleep paralysis, right? Right. She said that she says that some people will call it sleep paralysis, but like for her, she knows what she saw. She knows what she felt. Um, she could feel hands closing down on her. She saw a hooded figure at the foot of her bed shadow figures darting in and out and like she sent this in before we even did like the shadow figure episode so she touches on a lot of things that we eventually start talking about in our episodes um yeah yeah and her and i kind of talked a little bit back and forth and when this started she was 15 um and she's now 38 and she believes that whatever she summoned is just kind of dormant, but it's still around because around eight years ago when she had her son, um, she was laying him in his bassinet and she was watching TV and she noticed that black hooded shadow figure walk in front of the TV and into a wall. Oh man. Uh, yeah. She, she believes that it, it just kind of comes up to let her know that it's still around. Um, and it's definitely and she, attached to her, right? Because it's she's not in the same house, or right, I mean, obviously as right. before. So, yep, yeah, yeah. I guess I have some kind of follow up questions that come to mind for her. Um, mm-hmm. You know, as as far as is, does she still experience or has ever experienced sleep paralysis? If that's gonna if even a thing with her, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I, I believe her uh, either way, but. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a lot that kind of comes to mind with that. Oh, yeah, it's just it's just kind of messed up because it's like that's been following her for 23 years. I know it's a long time. Uh, yeah, she and says she stages, just... so that 
I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I've heard a lot of good things about staging, so. Yeah. Jeez. Oh, stages. I thought you said stages, like stages houses. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and here's the black hooded figure that. I hear if you rearrange the family right. room. Right. <laughs> no. Face the it couch in a different direction. <laughs> no. Oh, man. Yeah. So stages and all that, too. And it just, yeah. how creepy it pops up to let her know it's still there right around the time she had her kid. I know. <laughs> oh, man. I could not imagine that. Mm mm. No, I would not care for that at all. And then I'd like to know, like, what the age of her house is that she lives in, if there has any history in the house, too, or if it just mm -hmm. is attached to her, um, if she's heard the, the growling noises uh, since. I mean, did mm -hmm. she say that in the email, if she's heard the um, more recently? The, it sounds like the most recent thing was the uh, seeing the hooded fig figure when she put her son in his bassinet about eight years ago. Um, cause she didn't mention anything else. She, all she said was that she does believe that it's just kind of dormant and it's been, she said it's been quiet. She's talked to people who have had experiences like hers as like support, that sort of thing. Um, mm -hmm. and that she sages, oh, she, I sage my new home. So they must've moved somewhat recently as well. Um, oh. But what a tough what a tough way to live though. Like just in the back of your head knowing something is laying dormant and mm -hmm. you don't know when it's gonna pop back up. Yeah. You know? Yeah, that would be extremely just like unsettling is the word that comes to mind. Yeah. I mean you're you're living your life on eggshells. Mm-hmm. Hmm. But it sounds like the last physical experience she had was when she was fifteen. Um, the big, big one. Yeah, that's what it's. No, no, no. Sorry. Um, that's when it started. So it was on and off for several years, it sounds like. And then um, when she was 30 and had her son, that was the last kind of visual that she had of anything. And it's been quiet since. And did, did she say that started immediately after she was dabbling into all that? All that? Uh, I don't know. I, I was going to say all that jazz. Stuff, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, no, at first she didn't think it was working and she became frustrated because she was saying, you know, these spells that were in a different language and she was playing with spirit board, Ouija board, right? Um, cause she, you know, she found these spells in, in a spell book and everything. Um, but nothing happened at first. So a few days passed by after she started and that's when things started to change. She started hearing strange sounds. Um, that's when sleep paralysis started for her, but she, like she says, and what she knows is that it wasn't sleep paralysis. Something was holding her captive. She could hear growling noises, voices whispering to her, calling out her name. Mm -hmm. And I may have missed it, but another follow-up question I would have would be, what was her intent by doing this? I guess, what was her goal? What would she like to have seen done differently or was Ooh. this her what was this her goal like what did she want to see if this was real and experience something evil and, and crazy or was she trying to do one or maybe another thing and because maybe she fumbled with the way it was done or said or it said the words incorrectly uh it being in a different language mm. did something did a different result happen because of it oh well, that's a good point i never thought about that it, it sounds like, if anything, she was just curious, like we've all been with the stories that we've shared, right, at first. Like, you're 15. Right. You've got that invincibility complex when you're a teenager. You feel like nothing bad's going to happen to you. So let's play the Ouija board and say these spells and see what happens, right? Right. Because um, she... But then you said yeah. she became frustrated. Mm-hmm. So I wonder what, what she was expecting to happen or... You know what I mean? Yeah. Hmm. Wow. that's where my mind goes mm. Wow. because now you know if she did want this to happen you got to be careful what you wish for because you know now it's it's really here right I mean she does call it the summer of hell <laughs> um, it's, right. it's there forever. and says that she has no one to blame but myself so mm -hmm. 
I I don't think she. I don't know. It seems it seems to me like it was a curiosity thing, and see, and that's I kind of put myself in the same shoes. Um, a little bit different though, like you know how we talk about how we want to visit all these sites on location yeah. and, and yeah. record experiences. And the whole name of the podcast is don't follow me home. And, right. you know, as much as I want to believe that nothing would follow me home in the back of my head, it's like, okay, if I do follow through with, with going to these locations with you guys, what, you know, where, what is that chance that something would follow me home and terrorize my family? Right. <laughs> you know? No, it's scary. I thought about that too. <laughs> yeah. When, with places I visited or like, I don't know, you hear all these horrible stories about people's animals getting sick when they have, like, things attached to them, and, and I don't want my animals to get sick. Right. Um, so, I don't know. I I struggle with that, too, but then I end up doing what probably isn't considered smart to a lot of people and going and ghost hunting in these places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, a lot of people do it, right? And mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I mean, if there's any way that like Corey, we could like communicate through this stuff. If you didn't want to go to one place or whatever, we could still like interact together while we're on location or whatever. If it's some place that you oh, didn't yeah. want to go to, yeah. Yep. You know what I'd love to do? I'd love to be that guy that just sits on his butt and just in you know in the van outside. And just uh, <laughs> just looks at the film Watches as you guys everything. are all walking. Yeah, and is like, "Oh, Justin, there's much. something behind you." <laughs> yeah, you're gonna. <laughs> no, yeah. there's not. <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna set me up with a wire and just set me. Through, yeah, you know. yeah, Justin, what's That's that? Cool. <laughs> it's right behind you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would love to be that guy that just like looks over the footage and see if I can find anything. You know, like if we're able to set up a couple different cameras in rooms that you guys aren't. Oh yeah. In, and just to see if anything happens and just be like, oh, guys, you know, I just saw this. And I don't know. I'd love to be that guy because I'm just a, I'm, a, I'm a chicken when it comes to this. Yeah, no, I completely agree. And uh, <clears throat> if there's ever – if I don't feel comfortable, I'm going <laughs> to snuggle up right next to you there, buddy. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just send you, Amber. You could go yeah. over. Just by myself. <laughs> Thanks, <Yeah>. guys. <laughs> Well, Give be, me one of those protective the... voodoo dolls. <laughs> okay. The good or the bad? The good, the protective, I said. <laughs> Rusty nails. <laughs> Urine. <laughs> Urine what? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> well, maybe if we put some cinnamon and some whiskey in a jar and shake that up, you'll have a good time with it. You never know. <laughs> there you go. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Oh boy! Well, uh, thanks for the submission. That was definitely a cool story. Yes, thank um, you, I mean, Nina. C- cool for us to discuss, not to experience. Right. But, right. No, I appreciate it. Yeah. And I told her, like in the message, I was like, "Thank you so much for sharing." Like that gave me the creeps reading it. So I can only imagine what it's like living it. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so, and as and is always, she, is she from our state here or somewhere else? I I have no idea. Nope, I don't. Okay. I, that I don't know. Okay, because that, that, that would, would say a lot, know. too. I <laughs> yeah. mean, if she's from may, maybe more of the East Coast, you've got a lot of older homes out there yep. and stuff. You know, She's from Antarctica. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a new one. <laughs> right? <laughs> I don't know. Ice Coast? Who knows? Yeah. How creepy. Hmm. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, and as always, keep the submissions coming because I love reading everyone's tales and hearing from people who are people that we don't know is always a little more fun than hearing from people that we actually do know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Hey friends, send us. Yes, (laughs) please send them in. I mean, they're no, they're always great stories. We just, we'd like to actually feel like we're (laughs) getting other people. people. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll take it a step further, even though too. And if anybody out there lives in a currently haunted house, or they believe Ooh. it to be haunted, and wants to send us maybe an EVP or like um, uh, surveillance footage of their at-home camera, or if they set yes. up their own 
whatever, you know, we don't want to see you guys sleeping or anything, but if it's in a room, you know, <laughs> in, a, in an empty room in the parlor or something, you know, just in uh, the parlor, <laughs> in the butler's cabin. <laughs> no, that's a, it's all seriousness. That's actually a really brilliant idea. Yeah. If anyone yeah. wants to send like pictures and, or EVPs, like you said, please, like I, we all like love that stuff. So, mm-hmm. Heck yeah. I want to play Clue now. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I got it from. <laughs> Colonel Mustard in the study. <laughs> With a knife. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Heck yeah. Well, I don't really have anything else did to we, add unless you guys do. Uh, did we have anything else? I know. No, I think unless you guys have any, I don't know if I can answer any more questions about what we talked about, but any more questions or thoughts? I don't think so. Okay. No, I just wanted to say that I really like the direction that this podcast is heading in. Mm-hmm. I know that for the first few episodes here, we only have source material to work with, with uh, the more of the common things that people hear. And mm-hmm. that's why we're discussing this. But as we branch out further, um, not only to on location, but as people submit, maybe like we just discussed, maybe their own uh, footage or um, mm-hmm. uh, voice recordings. I, I, I would love digging into more of that sort of thing, too. Mm -hmm. and uh just analyzing that stuff i just i would get a kick out of that oh for sure me too me too i love getting scared listening to good evps so yeah and i have tried to get evps before and have not been successful so i would love to uh heal or (laughs) heal i would love to hear (laughs) hear the real deal (laughs) say that 12 times fast (laughs) oh geez (laughs) 12 not 10 Yeah. yeah so Anyway. Keep sending stuff in Sick. is all I was going to say. Yeah. So thanks everyone for listening. And until mm-hmm. next time, you all have a great night. And uh, I think episode seven, do we have that in the docket of what we're talking about yet? I'm I don't know. not sure. Uh, did we... we haven't talked about I, it. No, I've got some ideas. We, we but... haven't talked about it no. at all. Um, all right well it'll, it'll be a mystery to be determined it'll be a surprise <laughs> <Yeah>. next week <laughs> surprise episode looking forward to it all right we, sh- Thanks again, we should just we should well, <laughs> we should do that we should we should Minnesota have like goodbye every pod fourth on the week podcast. or something every fourth week one oh, we man. switch off people and then they choose the topic and then the other people have no idea what it is Ooh. okay I like well, it. Who, I mean, Amber needs to do all the research. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. No, that's true because I don't Jeez. research anything, anyways. So, and I, I don't really contribute a whole lot. Anyways. Oh, stop it! Yes, you do. You do all the no. hard work. Yeah, I mean, everybody well, does their part. Yeah, I don't sure. do a whole lot either. Um, I just sit here and make jokes. But in all seriousness, like, if we do get email submissions. Like with different, I mean, how cool would it be to have like a surprise episode of like, Mm -hmm. you guys are not going to believe what you hear on the next episode. No, I like that. Yeah, that that would be awesome. I do like that. Yeah. All right. Well, now that we did a Minnesota good classic Minnesota goodbye on on our podcast, what do you guys think about (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Final goodbye for this episode. (laughs) Justin, take it away. (laughs) All right, thank you so much for listening to episode number six, Voodoo. Next week's a mystery. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> Say bye-bye. goodbye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.